Hi everyone, Esper here. Today we'll be going through the new solo flanking patch that dropped earlier this week on the 25th. This patch introduces a new hub, new gear, a new story segment, and some solo bosses that go through. For lore enthusiasts, this new hub is basically an alternate timeline where the Nyane Cult won. The hub is a very long-awaited quality of life addition to the game. It's very similar to the previous Water Boom event map if you were playing during it. It contains portal access to all content, except for Puri and the ongoing Misery event. This saves a lot of time hopping between hubs, as you'll be able to do nearly everything from inside this hub. Two notes regarding this area. Hub movement is done by the Brazier. This might not be immediately obvious. Shop and crafting NPCs are located upstairs. You don't really need to climb the stairs, just jump through like so. This patch also introduced polishing passives, which can be skilled to improve two skills per character. This is unlocked from the passive skill menu as long as your character has completed their fifth promo. Just level up the new passive, and if your polish skills are level 20, there will be a polish passive this skill. The passives themselves don't cost any SP, so no worries there. For me personally, I took all the polishes except Mirei's Twilight Slash and choose Double Tap. For utility skills that have been polished, like uh, for example Yunha's Mark Scar, Seiha's Dash, and Tina's Fridge, it's a personal preference whether you want to polish those or not. If you don't like how they play, then feel free to not polish them. As for the storyline, it will take about 20 to 30 minutes to clear if you're skipping the text. It's not a long one if you're looking to just unlock the latest content. Finishing the content unlocks a set of free daily bosses to do for materials that will be used to craft Flame King gear. These are the Greedy Ominous Treasure and the Cultist Understated Relic. The treasure can be purchased and sold on the black market, whilst the relic is untradeable and character bound. Each boss will drop 10 relics and a random amount, around 20-ish, treasures per clear. Currently, we only have access to T5, otherwise known as Infinite, for cores and mods. The amplifier is only at the lock stage. Be aware that these can be further transcended after we get the Flame King raid update, so you will need to invest in a memory shape device or sacrifice enhancement or tunes if you decide to commit to gear at this stage. The cores at T5 will be slightly better than a normal BK core at the same enhancement level, except Bastet as long as you maintain 100% uptime on the dodge buff. The mods on the other hand outclass MK mods at the same enhancement level, even in a lock state. The locked amplifier outclasses the T4 DEG amp. This can be crafted for alts who haven't done DEG extreme yet. The main time gate for this gear set are the Nyane cult relics, wherein you get 30 a day, 10 for each boss. Completing the storyline will also give you 10 relics to start with. Reaching infinite on core and mods using 100% guarantee takes 175 relics per piece of gear. The locked amp costs 175 relics to craft as well. So this is around 6 days per piece of gear without gambling transcension. Another thing to note here is that Flame King mods use a new system compared to the old Machine King mods. There are actually 3 separate mod types you can craft, one for each conditional, that is Air, Back and Chase. The Flame King mods are also not compatible with Machine King mods, both normal and precise. Even though there are 3 types of mods, we'll only be using 2, as the AE 12.5 mod is still superior to a standalone FK mod. Now for mod pairing choices, I have the following. Generally everyone takes air and chase if possible, as these two are the most consistent conditionals. Some characters will need to take back due to a lack of force chase procs. For Seiha, air and chase, back for high skill. Sylvie is air and back, chase for more consistency on major damage skills. Yuri is air and back, chase is also viable. Jay and Tain both use air and back. Nata is air and back, Levier is air and chase, uh, back is more or less the same for her. Harpy is air and chase, back is also viable but more skill oriented. Tina is the exception to the rule, she wants to go chase and air, but we can replace air for back for really good Tina players, or those who can't be bothered jumping for airstrike procs. Vio is air and back. The last two teams can more or less go back or chase with their mods, due to these characters' abundance of force conditionals. The more consistent pairings are as follows. Luna, air and chase. Soma, air and chase. Bai, air and back. Seth, air and back. Wolfgang, air and back. Chu, air and back. Lucy, air and back. Mirei, air and back. Yunha, air and chase. Eri, air and back. Eri is the only exception here, and she has to use back due to her passive. Amplifier choices are a lot more simple. Everyone goes air except Tina and Airy. 
Tina uses Chase, Eri uses Back. Finally, a quick overview of the solo daily bosses that actually drop the Nyane cult relics. The boss order is a bit weird this time round. Note that the first boss, Tindalos, is actually positioned on the very right. You won't be able to use the F4 next operation button if you start from the left at Lovecraft. This is infinite revive content, so no real worries even if you die. All the bosses start with 50 HP bars and will enter an overload phase at 20 bars. This adds a shield to the boss that once destroyed will stun them and end whatever mechanic they were doing. Failing to break the shield within 30 seconds will trigger a wipe mechanic from the boss. In order to break the shield, you will need to use the phase awakening skill given by the disc equipment from A12. The higher level your phase awakening is, the more damage you will deal to the overload shield. The shield will take a fixed amount of damage from skill hits, your TCP and actual damage do not matter here. Higher rank skills, such as 5th promo skills and especially ult, will deal more damage to the shield. Even with a level 1 disc, ult will either break the shield or leave it on a very low amount. So my recommendation is to save ult to clear the shield and ignore any mechanics the boss is throwing at you during overload. For Tindalos, she'll often open with a one-shot move that targets the inside of the circle. Just move out of the circle and you'll be fine. The rest of her moves are just standard red circle stuff. Her main mechanic prior to 20 bars is the circle of baptism. The background will darken and 8 clones of Tindalos will be summoned outside of the circle. For the duration of this mechanic, the circle will be engulfed in a wheel of fire. If you touch it, you'll take a chunk of damage and be pushed back inside the circle. Once the clones resolve, two big red circles will spawn on top of two clones opposite to one another. Once these red circles fully contract, a large line AoE is fired between these two clones. You want to move out of the way of the line AoE or perfect dodge it. Rarely, the red circles will spawn on 4 clones instead of 2, forming a cross formation instead. If you take longer to reach 20 bars, she can also do the one shot inside the circle again, but this time with walls closing in. Just escape the circle before the walls come in. After 20 bars, she enters overload phase. Here we get 6 balls spawning around the outside of the circle. Shortly after, either one or two of the balls will be struck with lightning. The balls struck by lightning will pulse a few times and become red AoEs that will need to be avoided. The 2 ball variation is like so. The 1 ball variation is like so. If you fail the shield, you'll need to perfect dodge the wipe mechanic. The final mechanic repeats indefinitely until you defeat the boss, regardless of whether you succeeded or failed overload. For Annabelle, she'll only start her first set of mechanics below 40-ish bars. You'll be given a coloured shield, and Annabelle will spawn three red AoEs that are colour-coded. Simply stay inside the AoE denoted by the colour of your shield. Be sure to stay inside your colour's AoE only, as you'll be hit if you touch any overlapping spots. At 20 bars, she'll enter Overload. Here, we'll get five coloured shields. The positioning is random, but it will always be the same five colours. Here, you just need to stay inside the shield that matches the colour of the attacking Annabelle clones. If you fail the shield, you'll need to perfect dodge the white mechanic. Unlike Tindalos, however, there isn't a user-friendly indicator to follow. Like Tindalos, the final mechanic repeats indefinitely until you defeat the boss. Lastly, we have Lovecraft. He's mostly the same as his Machine King raid counterpart, if you haven't played the MK Raid before, be aware that all his moves are iframe breakers, so try to avoid them completely. Outside of one move, all his moves hit in front of him, so staying to his backside is usually safe. At around 40 bars, he'll start activating additional environmental attacks. The pistons in the back and sides of the map will randomly activate as the battle goes on. Occasionally, he'll also spawn a missile strike that carpets the entire map in red circles. Just head into the blue circle with a radar to gain a shield that prevents damage from the missiles. At 20 bars, we'll enter Overload. The only new addition here is that sometimes a shipping container will fall down followed by a full piston activation. You will need to move behind the container based on which pistons are firing. Sometimes you'll just get unlucky and have Lovecraft targeting the safe area behind the container. The wipe mechanic here, after failing the shield, is easier than Annabelle. You can even just walk into the safe spot with appropriate timing. Like the other two bosses, the final mechanic repeats indefinitely until you defeat the boss. 
And that's it for this patch. Like, comment, and subscribe to the Nyane Cult. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. Until next time. Amen. Oh.